Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 16, brought to you by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to Knowledge 16, everybody. This is theCUBE. theCUBE is SiliconANGLE's flagship, flagship program. We go out to the events. We extract a signal from the noise. Frank DeSantis is here. He's the CTO of the, the Hartford. And Saurabh Dubé is here. He's the director at KPMG. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Glad to be here. Knowledge Glad 16, here. what's happening for you guys? A lot. We're getting a lot done here, learning a lot. This is our, my first year here, actually. And, and thanks for the promotion, by the way. I'm mm -hmm. the director of service management. <laughs> I oh, know they had CTO. Oh, there. great. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, That's okay. Know. Come on the cube. Good things happen. You'll be the CIO before you know it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your first year, Frank. At, yeah, at, we had uh, put service now in a year ago, during, actually during last year's conference. So. Yeah, well, how's it going? It's going really well. It's been uh, quite a year. We've got a lot done and got a lot more planned. So we'll talk tour. more about that. Uh, but Sara, what's, what's your role at, at KPMG? And so I'm, uh, I'm a director with uh, RCI Advisory Practice. We, um, we are the practice that kind of owns our ServiceNow uh, Alliance. And uh, I'm a solution architect. Um, I focus more around the build out of the solutions and generally, you know, clients like uh, Hartford, and you know, especially when we're talking about large uh, enterprise scale implementations, uh, there's a certain way to go about them, and I work with the team that kind of develops our methodology for it. So you guys were, Frank called you out as one of the key partners, or day one. Yeah, so we, we use KPMG as the implementation partner. So how was that decision made? Actually, take us back, Frank, to the decision. Yeah. So you, you had some guys here last year kicking the tires. This right. is real, talking to people. Yeah. No, we, uh, we had a strategic goal to SaaS, right? And so we were looking on the market for, first we were looking for the tool providers and we narrowed it down to the two biggest SaaS providers for service management tools. Uh, we did a bake off on that and then we chose ServiceNow because the decision was obvious from a functionality and a, a experience perspective. And then we looked at the major partners with ServiceNow, and we narrowed it down to three, and at the end of the day, we picked KPMG. And you were replacing an existing tool set? Yeah, or? we were replacing the BMC Remedy tool set, yes. Uh -huh. So do you, do you, when you bring in ServiceNow, do, are you retiring systems? Or are you sort of, are people yeah, hanging on to the legacy? Or? Yeah, we, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a different experience in the sense that the, they talked about customer experience. It was very low with the product we were placing. So it was easy to bring in service now because all of the users are very frustrated with the old technology. And so we did a lot of demos and, and got people excited about the new tool. And so we, that's how we made the decision and, and implemented it. And from the SaaS perspective, do you have a, kind of a, a broader SaaS um, directive with, with we, your we whole do. suite of applications and this just yeah, happened to be we're, we're one piece in, of it? Yeah, we're, you know, we're an insurance company, right? And we don't want to own infrastructure and we don't want to own applications. We just want to lease space, lease seats. So ServiceNow is an ideal solution. Uh, prior to that, I implemented a, a SaaS our our PPM, our project and portfolio management system, which is not ServiceNow at the moment, it's an HP system. But our this whole strategic direction is to try and SaaS as much as possible. Because yeah, we think of the stag, we talked about it a little bit, right? Yep. Hartford is a, as a conservative, you know, kind of old Extremely school conservative. Um, yep. insurance company. So for you guys to really take kind of a cloud, a cloud native uh, approach and start to swap out on-prem stuff with cloud shows pretty progressive uh, move. It, it's progressive. We've been extremely cautious. You know, a lot of security concerns around data and everything else. So, it took us. Uh, it actually took us. Uh, you know, we tried to go to service now like three years before the time we went to it, but they were not a publicly traded company. They were a very small company, and from that conservative approach, we decided not to do business until. Uh, last year, obviously, you guys know they've grown dramatically. They're publicly traded, so we're a lot more comfortable with it. And and Sara, what role does KPMG play in these types of implementations? So I think um, I think we started off pretty much at the top of this one. We started with helping uh, Frank and team build the business case uh, for um, you know switching over 
from BMC to ServiceNow. And um, I, I, was, I was thinking when, Frank, you were talking about the whole customer experience piece yes. uh, or consumer experience piece being, uh, being so better. Um, it, was, it was two days worth of workshops that we did just to see if people would get interested and you know, try to get their requirements. The response we got was overwhelming. We had two days, eight hours back to back, packed up with people coming in with their requirements of this is how we want to do it, but we're not able to at this point. So it, was, it started from the top, helping build the business case from a qualitative and quantitative point of view. Um, I think even the, uh, the internal rate of return was like huge right. on, this, yep. uh, on the uh, So big that you, it was embarrassing, right? You just didn't want <laughs> it was. one of those deals, right? <laughs> Don't show this to anybody, they'll not believe it kind of thing, or? <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> It kind of a whiteboard exercise in terms of if you start from scratch, here's you know how would you like your system to work, or what yes, did you show them for it, two days to get them it, so excited? It, it was not so much of a start from scratch. It was more around um, you know let's talk through what you have and what you need to you want to be at, and let's find out how you'd get there. So the you have part was the two day workshops that I was talking about, but uh, where do you want to get and how do you get there? Those exercises then, then happened over a period of time, and we kind of worked together to define the full roadmap of how this would get implemented over time as well. Yeah, we had two separate engagements. One was to help us do the business case, and the other one was actually implementation. Because we had, a, in our case, we believe it's a sizable implementation that with 30,000 users. and uh, 30,000 users? 30,000 users we had to convert. We did it in a nine-month period with KHBMC's help. We had like an army of people onshore, offshore, uh, and did a lot of people change management on that. And it was uh, extremely successful implementation. It's, uh, so I, 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 before we come back, because I want to you know, peel the onion on that a little bit, but the business case, uh, can you talk about, give us a high level as to what that looked like? And, and when you get these situations where IRRs or telephone numbers, a lot of times, you know, conservative companies will just strike out anything that's soft dollars and go right to the hard dollars. Yep. Can you talk about that a little bit, add some color to the business case? Well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> or, we don't like to share nature. numbers, you know? <laughs> no, yeah, you don't have to share numbers, but just again, it was, at a high level. What, it was, extreme, was it from it was productivity extreme, or? It was extremely compelling, and we didn't use any soft numbers whatsoever. Yep. But part of the business case was displacing a couple of systems but it was also uh, reversing an offshoring support decision. So we actually developed an in-house support team for the system because that turned out to be far less expensive to support it onshore than offshore. So if we looked at the whole package, we're talking about around a two million run rate a year savings. And, you know, and, and the big compliant. chunk of that came from you guys, in order to service customers or whatever you're doing, you were staffing up offshore because right. it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, wow, yeah. we can automate. We could automate and, and, you know, onshore, you know, sometimes offshore looks better than it does because you've got a lower rate, but you're stuck to that 40 hour work week, right? Versus doing it onshore. And, and we find that the people working on the system just love working on it, right? So they're far more productive than working on the previous system. So it's a quality aspect. The morale aspect. Now, absolutely. It's whatever. also an apples to apples kind of a thing. Um, sorry for interrupting. No, please. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we focused more on was, if you're going to compare, uh, you know, if you're trying to make, build a business case, it's more than just, um, you know, the numbers that appear obviously in front of you, right? It's not just the license cost, not just the cost of people, but when you have to go apples to apples, you have to look at, if I was to develop everything I'm getting in this solution that I'm going to need. Um, what, is, what would that have cost me otherwise? So the apples to apples part in this case, I think that played a, that played a huge part as well. So well, really okay. looking down the road, not necessarily this, today, but what right. I'm going to need down the road. Yeah, we, it, were, we were kind of stagnant because we, you know, we brought, uh, we were very mature as far as having individual process owners for every process. Uh, you know, we had multiple, multiple IT organizations. We brought them together over the past five or 10 years. We brought our process teams together, so we were very mature in our process structure, which made our, gave us the ability to move faster. But we were stuck with the old technology because we could only go so far. So even though we knew what our ideal process was, we couldn't implement it in the old technology. And that was one of the dramatic improvements moving the service now. KPMG showed us how 
Yeah, you can do that in the new system. So you had to fit the process to the tool as opposed yes. to the, to, the, the tool, tool being flexible enough exactly. to fit whatever process you wanted. Yeah. Did you have to do a lot of mods and, and to, to bring this in? Or? Uh, no, we didn't. We really didn't do a lot of customizations. We have a, a large service catalog, so there's a lot of development. Right. I wouldn't call them customizations around that service catalog. Uh -huh. And we have a, a fair number, about 37 integrations to systems because, you know, we didn't implement this as an isolated system. We embedded it at Connecticut to our ERP systems and other systems. So it's, it's part, it's core of our whole IT systems. Now I got to go back to something that Saro was saying, you, the apples to apples comment. That assumes that somebody was going to sign the check for that, those, you right. know, that, because was that the assumption going in? Did you have the support of the CFO or whomever? You know, that, okay, we're going to do this no matter what. Now pick the best path, is that right? Or? Yeah. I think it was a five year plan that kind of, yep. so Hartford does a five year business case. A it's rolling not a, five year yeah. architectural plan. So when we built that, it showed that within maybe the next two years, the numbers wouldn't match. But if the moment you cross the fourth year onwards on a rolling basis, the apples to apples starts playing a very big uh, role in that. So yeah, the expectation was that if you didn't do this, three years from now, you're gonna start losing money on it. I love business cases like this that can justify themselves on hard dollars. You can strike out the soft dollars because it's always easier to get approved. But the reality is, is when you go implement, and I wonder if you could confirm this or deny it, but the soft dollar value oftentimes dwarfs the couple of million bucks that you're going to save. Is that what you found? Yeah, no, absolutely. We, we found considerably more savings than we expected from a soft perspective, you know, but it's very hard to tie that to dollars. And in, a, right. in, a, in our particular company, we can't even talk about, you know, well, I avoided 10 7 one incidents this year, which would have cost you X number of dollars. Throw them out of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. <laughs> so unless you can give them a code before. that it's coming out of, you can't talk about it. Right. You sign up for more budget or less budget in right. that case. So, okay, so now, um, so it's been a year, you said? Yes. Yeah. I got to ask the mulligan question. If you had a mulligan, would you, what would you take it on or would you do anything differently? No, actually not. We, uh, we decided to do the Big Bang, do everything at once because every, it, it, it amazes me that some people say, well, I'm going to do the CMDB first and this other thing second. All that stuff is so integrated. You really can't do it separately because you, you draw out your problem and you actually cost more money to implement it. So we, in nine months, like converted everything, incident problem, change, asset management, uh, release, you and know, the big discovery. Uh, internal comms effort and training effort, and we're hearing that over we and did, over that you really need to have a yeah, kind of a support no, we, behind that. We spent a lot of time and money using KPMG's change management resources, and we can't say enough about that. They did an incredible job, uh, people change management, because we literally had to train at different levels, but all 30,000 employees. And you had a, you had a flop over date you, yep. on a particular day, you switched? Yeah. And, and they were there, so people in change, they, they focus on behavioral change management and training. Right. So they were involved from day one. It's not like we had to bring them in halfway through the project. They were involved from day one because they had to understand what were they checking for, right? Um, organization uh, right. you know, as big as this, there's definitely some detractors. So the whole readiness assessment, understanding which, where this could potentially become an issue, catching that ahead of time and solving all those things, all of that was part of what they were doing. So substantial project, 30,000 people. Um, when you do a conversion like this, I guess it's not like a COBOL to mainframe to something, but do you have to freeze anything, freeze code or freeze process? Or? Well, we, we freeze uh, three months into this project. When we start, we freeze the current environment. Okay. So we're only processing incidents, no enhancements, no changes to the current environment. In, in one aspect, it's kind of easier because we're abandoning an old system. So it's not like I'm having to upgrade it. So I'm building a new one and then moving people onto the new one. So we were able to keep the old one up and running for three months to run off tickets. So you didn't have to convert tickets. So that was helpful. And then the only thing you lost is the new enhancements. Right. Well, not uh, really, because uh, the new enhancements that were being requested were now going to the new tool. So as yeah, but the new tool wasn't up yet, right? Yeah, so but the requirements would So they were postponed. I think the timeline yeah. was anyways yeah. was right quick. about you know, if somebody came, gave a requirement, it would have taken three to five months to actually build oh, that requirement right. in anyways. Right. So Okay, so it was a net neutral. 
Yeah. So it didn't affect the business case negatively no. at all, that, that freeze. No, we had, a, we had a task from our CTO. Yeah, you can do this if it pays for itself. And, but, we, and it a did. But, there's a, but finish that sentence, if you would. Does it pay for itself, does it, if it pays for itself in five years, he's going to say no. <laughs> but, no. But so what, what kind so of... So in a five-year CBA, it's, we're, we're, we're making money. At the first year, after the first year, we're saving money. So it paid for itself within two years. So you're breaking even that, that yeah. fast. Yeah. And the net present value is enormous, yeah. Yeah. right? With that something of yeah. that size. Yeah. Interesting that you chose, I, I, I'm intrigued by your comments about, we just did a whole house. Yeah. Because it's somewhat antithetical to this notion of, you hear today, agile, take it in small chunks, et cetera, et cetera. But sometimes that just doesn't make sense. It makes sense, if you're gonna it do it, do it. Well, that's the whole thing with service management, as you can see, it's totally integrated. Mm -hmm. It's hard to take a piece out. Like, you know, if I say I'm going to do change management first, talking to some people, well, how can you do that without your CMDB, right? You, you, you can't, you know. Well, yeah, we can do it manually, but, you know, you don't get the savings and you put more risk into the situation if you don't take at least those core service management functions in a bundle and move them in together. And we're not talking about completely uh, you know, leaving aside the Agile uh, methodology. Once the first Big Bang happens, then the approach it becomes more of a hybrid Agile because at that point you start to request you know, your incremental updates, the new enhancements that are coming in, start following in that cycle. The first Big Bang, because of the case, because of the scenario that we had, had to be done in one strong integrated way again. You're leaving a solution which was built over, what, seven, eight years? Yeah. So going from there, you have to bring in a big bang approach, but then from that point onwards, you have to show the agility and say, we're going to do this very quickly, you're going to have shorter releases for enhancements as opposed yeah. to you know, the first we're one. We're in a very agile, we do a release every week. It's like the presentation the other day. We have a train that leaves every Thursday night. If you're on it, you're going into production the next day. So you're pushing so, code every week? Every week. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. That's not antithetical to agile. It's, it's uh, you know what it is. It's this, we talk a lot of startups, and they don't have the money to do a big bang, so they, they, they have no choice. They don't have thirty thousand people either. Take a piece at a time. So so yeah. that's that's true. And so what about you know that whole Scrum and agile? That's a sort of cultural change that has been affecting you know your life at the it Harvard. It is, right? and we're we're looking at that, and, and we did like Sarb said, a, a hybrid approach to implementing it because it was such a large project. But from a ServiceNow evolution perspective, we're totally in an agile environment and how we release code and how we have our, our testers. From a Hartford's perspective, we're looking at agile and DevOps in a, in a larger sense right now, you know, outside of service management, but obviously it will integrate with service management. So we see the developer conference going on and, and mm -hmm. how does, an, I, I think I'm correct, and the Hartford has a pretty big development team and mm -hmm. pretty high quality, and, and so where, how do they fit into the whole service now? Because these guys talk a lot about low code or no code, or, but if you're intense code, you can go for it. What are the developers saying about uh, service now as a platform? Well, the, the, the developers use service now uh, to process incidents, changes, release, you know, so do application support. From a development perspective, they're outside of service now. As part of our DevOps initiative, we're going to be integrating with whatever PPM tools and whatever development tools we align on, because right now that's another initiative that's going on outside of service management, but we're part of that because we need to support it. So we're looking to rationalize our development tools and testing tools and get more a DevOps perspective from our application, customer application development teams. But all of those teams use ServiceNow on a daily basis to, you know, to move code into production, to process incidents. And so stuff. when I look at, when I think about the, the application, what the application portfolio must look like at the Hartford, Dan McGee this morning, I don't know if you saw his keynote, but he threw out an IDC number that said, Sometimes organizations have thousands or tens of thousands of apps. You're one of those organizations, we, clearly. I'll give you a modern magnet. Somewhere between 1,400 and 2,000 apps. Yeah, right okay. Now. And and then you can sort of think about those in suites. And, right. And you got claims, and you got your yeah. agent systems, and et cetera, et cetera. We've heard a lot yesterday in particular, and some today, about service management touching you know, the third estate. Right. Yeah. Does that so we're, resonate we're, with you? We're, we're integrated, so we use a different tool the architects use a tool to manage that application portfolio as far as 
the attributes. This is what the application does. These are the processes. Mm -hmm. These are the owners. And we take, we've integrated that into service now. We have a nightly feed into service now where we take those applications and we create different environments and we relate them to the infrastructure. And then we connect it on the back end and it goes directly into finance for monthly chargebacks. So we've, we've integrated the front end and the back end, but by doing that within ServiceNow, we also can track incidents against applications, incident against service, and not just infrastructure. And, and you said chargebacks, you're doing chargebacks, not showbacks, or? We're doing chargebacks. We did showbacks prior to ServiceNow, and now we're doing chargebacks. And we do it based on the relationships in the ServiceNow CMDB between the applications and the infrastructure components that comprise that. Uh, we got to go. I got like a million more questions. But, <laughs> um, all right, both of you guys give you a last word. So just your thoughts on, on Knowledge 16. Frank, your first time here. Well, I'm very, it's very impressive, right? It's, it's an amazing size of a crowd. I don't think I'll ever eat food here again because <laughs> the walk is too far. <laughs> so I'd rather pay for my lunch. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, I like some of the keynote thoughts and ServiceNow really needs to get out there and talk more about being outside of that core service management function mm -hmm. and more about the end-to-end -end integration. I think that's a huge opportunity. And Sarah Papafia, what's kind of the bumper sticker on the show from KPMG's perspective? Well, uh, this is my fifth knowledge. Uh, so I've been uh -huh. here pretty much as long as you have been here, I For, guess. Fourth yeah. for us. Fourth, fourth for us. us. Yeah. So yep, yep. Uh, I, was, I was at New Orleans the first one. Uh, but um, I think we're seeing that evolution of clients going from, let's start with ITSM, then let's turn it over. It's, it's almost like the ownership of the platform, uh, ownership of ServiceNow inside organizations moves from the ITSM group to the platform group. And that's when the third estate really kind of starts playing out because they start thinking about uh, what else can we do with this. And the whole, you know, what Frank said about this is, we can do much more than just ITSM. ITSM is just the starting point of it. Um, we're starting to see that turn happen with a lot of our clients as well. Great. Well, Saurabh and Frank, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE and sharing your story. So it's a good one. Thanks for having us. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest right after this is theCUBE. We're live from Knowledge 16. See you right Every once in a while, a true break